Hello, so now let's go for the um, SS control part of uh, Spring Boot. So a few words to explain um, what is the goal of um, assess control, why and why it is relevant. And um, you have probably done and learned about assess control before. So basically you <coughs> to try to guarantee that only the, the people that have the correct rights then can access and change the information. And we have seen there are several approaches to do it. Uh, what you are doing is an approach based on in, in roles. And you have three roles, the admin role, the teacher role, and the student role, okay? And so depending on the role you have, you can do different kinds of things in the, um, in the system. And, but this is not enough. Uh, you need to also have rules that use domain-specific information. Why? Because although I'm a teacher, I cannot basically access the information about the students of another teacher. I can only access information uh, uh, about the of my own teachers to the, the courses I teach. Okay, so that's um, so we need to have rules that actually access the database and check uh, the concrete information that is um, related with domain. That's why I'm saying that is domain specific information. And another thing that um, so when you define these rules, you should be really careful because things can be really become easily uh, really messy. And then it's difficult to manage and difficult to understand all these rules. So you should have you should define clearly what are the concepts you want to use, and use them, apply them systematically, and so that and consistently, so that you cannot get wrong. Okay, and so well the the rules we follow here is basically you have a, basic two main concepts: course and course execution. Um, and we're going to define actually uh, access rules for in, in, in the context of a course or in the course of the context of execution. For instance, in the context of a course, you have information like the topics that belong to the course and the questions. And in the terms of the um, course execution, you have information like the answers and okay, so uh, and assessments. Okay, so what you are going and the students. So what I'm going to do is basically, depending on you what you are assessing, I'm gonna we are going to check whether you teach the course execution, or if you teach one course execution of that course. So the main idea of the rules is that, for instance, you can change questions if you teach at least one course execution of the course. Okay, but you can only assess to the students of your course execution, even though you may uh, be teaching other course executions of the same course. Okay, so with this in mind, let's look now at the technology. So, which actually is the easy part in these things. Okay, have the the, the clean concepts in in your mind is the most important thing. But let's look how how do you do it. Um, from the point of view of the technology, okay? So I'm going to pick this case of the, um, the topic controller and you see this rule here, an, a pre-authorized rule. So in this rule, is, I'm saying that who, who can invoke this method? Basically, who has the role of admin and who has the role of the teacher and if you are the teacher, you should basically have the right to access this course. Where, which course? Do you see this course ID here? So it's what is in the parameter of the method. So basically what I'm gonna check here is that the person has the right to access this course. How do I check this? Well, I check it here in, um, in authorization, it's not in authorization, easier. You have this tutor permissions evaluator, okay. So here, basically what you have is, so tutor permission evaluator implements boot class, which is permission evaluator, and implements sorry, an interf uh, string, um, a Spring Boot interface and redefined this method as permission, which is the one that is 
uh, defined on the other side. Well, what, have, what is in this um, as permission? You have all this information that you receive and these two are information that you receive from the um, from uh, the the method, so the rule you, you 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 defined in the method. So the first thing we do here, you just get the user, okay? Because we have authentication here, so you can know which user are, are actually assessing. And then what you do next, you just go in to check the target domain object, which is this one, okay? So if you look there, you have two things here. You have this. And this okay so there are the two parameters you receive on the other side so you have the target domain object and you're gonna see what type of object you have so if you are an instance of course DTO or instance of course uh, of in integer so that's what you you do you just write these rules so in our case that I want to I want to show you this is an integer okay so an integer so it is an integer Okay, just we do it, you, you check the rule here. And the second thing I'm gonna check is the type of permission, which is there. So the type of permission is course access. So how do I check course access? Basically, I see here, if in the case of course access, I see user as an execution of the course. So this is a very small method, okay, that basically says you have course access if you have at least one execution of the course. How is it implemented? Basically, it's quite easy. So I go to the user, I get all its courses, and then I see if there are any match this course ID. Okay? Any match. So I, I go to the course, see what is the course ID, and I, I, I see if um, one of the courses have, one, one of the course executions have course ID like this one. Okay? Good. So that way I see and I follow the rule I told you that sees whether if I teach at least one of the discussion courses, I have the right to, in this case, see what are the topics. And the same applies to create a topic. Okay. And then what I do next. In this case, where I want to update the topic, I don't receive in the request parameters, I don't receive basically the, um, the course ID. Now I receive the topic ID. So I define a different type of access. So I have topic ID there and I say topic access. Okay. And now I do something very similar. I have topic access here and user as an execute rule is the same rule. The only difference is that I use the topic service to see what is the course ID associated with this topic. Okay? And I, I apply this systematically the same way. So I have course access, execution access, question access, topic access, assessment access, e quiz access. So for instance, for the ones that do not depend on the having at least, but you should have a particular you should be in, enrolled or teaching a particular execution course, you have, for instance, this case of as this execution, okay? Where in this case, or for, for the quiz, for instance, who, who can change one, one quiz if uh, only if you are teaching this execution course of the quiz, the quiz, okay? And so you have this and you have the rule there, okay? So I think it's... My suggestion is that you follow this, okay? And this provides a very clean way to um, define your assess control. But be careful that this can be messy if you are not consistent, okay? Try to be consistent. The best way to be consistent is uh, to, or to check that you are, being, you are consistent is look at this method here and see if it is cleanly defined, if it, is, uh, if it is elegant, if it is simple. Yeah, if it is simple, always uh, things are easier to understand. Okay. Um, related with this, I can go to another one, for instance, the uh, quiz. To see, it's just that you you see that is basically the same quiz controller, and you will see 
very similar things here. Okay. First one that has two uh, students involved. I can have the statement statement controller. Okay. Here I'm checking that when I submit an answer, so when the student is answering a quiz, I well the, the, the admin can do it and a student can do it if he has the permission for this quiz, which actually is converted to he basically is enrolled in the uh, course execution. Okay, so this is the one part of it. There's another part to do it to do it so. You, you, you do the access control here. There's another thing that you that uh, a much less fine grade, uh, okay, a much more coarse grained uh, access control that you need to know, okay. Here in the config you have web security configuration, and here you can do a more coarse grade uh, access control where you just define which URLs. Uh, required for its authentication. So in this case, just to give you an example, in this case, so this is a class that again extends from a, a Spring Boot class and you just define your what is specific for your application and it's basically the, here they do access control basing on the URLs. Okay, And w w what we have here is for instance I'm just requesting that all URLs are authenticated except out and images. So you require authentication for all URLs. And then a bit more advanced, you can use a GWT configurer here. So to, to say that you can use the tokens, but you learn a little bit more about tokens when we talk about the, the client side of the application. Okay. Uh, just to finish, to show the difference of these two, so that you have an idea, we define, I told you that we have several profiles, or three profiles, development profile and production profile, and what I'm saying here is that in development profile, I have a le less restrict access control here than we have when we are in production, okay? Look at in production, images and uh, uh, authentication, do not have access control. Look, images make sense because I just, well, we, we decide not to have access control to assess the images. And authentication is true because uh, when you do log in, you cannot have access control because uh, have any, uh, any person can try to log in, right? Only after login, you are going to check the, the access control. Okay, I think this is um, enough to, to, to understand this part and to use correctly assess control. So good work.